You sexy thing. You yeah. sexy thing. You got it like that. Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> but bearing in mind that her dog was fat as fuck. <laughs> What's your dream goal? World domination. <laughs> so I was like, come on! Hello, hello, hello. Is that really how you're going to start this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's done now. Hello, welcome to the Therapy Crouch. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, but I, I joke and then you just keep it in anyway, so... 100% staying in. You all right? I'm good. Huh? Well, want? actually, I'm not. You... I'm feeling deflated after Crouch Fest. So, as you know, Peter did his... That Peter Crouch podcast end of year extravaganza which is crouch fest and for people who don't know what that is i think you know people are expecting a bit of a live pod but it isn't it certainly isn't that <laughs> well describe what is it then oh, what is know. crouch fest i can't even describe it it's it feels like the darts if you've, ever, if you've ever seen the darts on telly it's like fancy dress everyone having a good time loads of guests music um a bit of chat, um, more music and games and singing. So when you came up with the idea, Crouch Fest, what were you looking to achieve? I know you've told me you wanted to do a kind of celebration of the year of the pod. Mm, exactly what it is. It's a celebration of the, the year of the podcast. Like we have lots of things that we say that kind of, you know, escalate. escalate. Um, it's a chance we talk about people. We have, an ama we have amazing guests. We try and invite them down. And um, whatever we've kind of talked about in that season, we try and replicate that in a live extravaganza. And it's for, do you know all it is? It's just about, it's not about taking itself too seriously. It's not, it's something completely different off the wall that everyone seems to enjoy and none more so than the hosts. Yeah. <laughs> we enjoy it. And most, Ross, how do you feel about it? Because I know you and our John were... I've been busy planning this for the past seven months. Mm, it was amazing, to be fair. I had a, we had our biggest laugh of our lives, but I'm also kind of glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's how do, I feel. Do you feel yeah. like it's a pinch me moment? Yeah, 100%. Because obviously you're in your early 20s. Mm. You've produced a show with our John and Peter um, to 12,000 people. Yeah. It was um, it was unbelievable. Afterwards, we and John, just, we'd be having a bevy chat to people and then we just looked at each other going, Friggin' hell, how did we pull that off today? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, we're all winging it. And that's why, you know, sometimes there's going to be, there's going to be things that, you know, I don't know, might not go as smoothly. But, but it did. There was no problems on the most night. Most of it went very smoothly. Yep. And it just shows that if you just have a go at things, you can yeah. pull them off. Yeah. And obviously the boys behind the camera, they did, they did an amazing job. Well, Kim Kardashian was saying, I was watching mm. the Kardashians last night because I was still hungover. We, we had a Sunday Monday. Have you ever done a Sunday Monday? No, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> done we... a Sunday Monday session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, no. no, a Sunday Monday is, obviously, we can't chill out on the weekend because we've got all the kids. And, oh, yeah. you know, Crouch Fest was such a hype. I was just exhausted. I arrived hot. I was, I was so nervous because not only... <laughs> My husband's in front of 12,000 people. My brother and my cousin have produced the show. So there was a lot, I felt a lot of pressure for us to kind of pull this off. So obviously we got pissed afterwards, celebrated. <laughs> Sunday, we were up, dog walk. I made a roast dinner. We went to bonfire night with the kids. So that was tough. Yeah. That was tough. <laughs> that I felt like tough. we bang, 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 bang. Oh. We, we did well. <laughs> we did well. But so Sunday, Monday is, we put all the kids to school on Monday. And we treated the whole of Monday like it was Sunday pre-kids. Nice. We've never done that. You're like, I don't think we've done that for Jason years. Jason and Stacey do it every Monday. It's a great shout. <laughs> so obviously, you know, we were in a position where I knew Crouch was going to be good big, so I kind of didn't book anything in, did we? No. So we had a chance for Monday to be relaxed and we we, we did it, didn't we? We went to we took the kids to school and came back. We walked the dogs. Yeah. And then we got them to bed. It was oh, so funny nice. though because Pete was like, "Oh, I've got to do some research for um, match. He's he's got to watch match of the day." So I thought, "Great, I, I wanted to snuggle." So I was like, "Oh, can you not go in another room? Can we just stay in our bed?" So he put his earpods on and was do watching match of the day, and I put the new Real Housewives of Beverly Hills on. Pete, I just saw him like that earpod out. <laughs> oh, well, I had the one. Out. I had the one that she couldn't see <laughs> out like that, um. and he's like that. With one eye on it. <laughs> he, he loves it. And even last even last night, even last night I went to bed because Pete wanted to watch the match and I'm so tired. We've we've all got colds, mm. sore throats, you know, 
it, so it was a lot, Crouch Fest, which is so one. run down. So I was like, I'm getting in bed with Sophia. I'm watching Kardashians. <laughs> Pete was watching the Tottenham game downstairs. He was up every two minutes, like peeking on it. Like, Creeping Jesus. And I was like, are you jealous? And he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be Something fair, about I started, them shocking shows. I started the new Kardashian you... yesterday. The one we're doing to Cabo. Mm. Yeah, it was good. We've been to Cabo. Have you? Great place. Oh, that yeah, was, yeah. That was the, the, the... One of our best, wasn't it? That was one of our best. That was the holiday where Pete thought that guy... So when we went to Cabo last, we were in this incredible hotel. It was actually the hotel from... Um, White Lotus. White Lotus yeah. that we stayed in. It was magnificent. But we were in the paper every day, like paparazzi shots of us. And we I think we've told this story before, yeah. haven't we? Yeah, we have. Um, but yeah, that's where we that's where that's we where were that when happened. Pete the incident. snatched Pete snatched the camera <laughs> off some random man who was just taking pictures of his wife and accused of taking pictures of us. I remember exactly the moment and where it was. <laughs> Lovely hotel that though. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh. One and only Pal Miller. So you'd sit there beautiful. on the on the sunbed round the pool and stuff or on the beach and they would come and bring cucumber for your eyes. They would massage your feet while you're on the sunbed. You'd have your own like sun cream dispenser. They'd bring like, you, you had like this little piece of Mad. leather. So if you didn't want to be disturbed, you'd put it the moon way up. And if you did want to be disturbed, you put it the sun way up. So they'd come with guacamole and chips, oh. you know, Ju like fresh juice juices that they were doing. It was just luxury to another level, wasn't Sensational, it? Sensational, yeah. I mm -hmm. think it's one of the best hotels I've been to. Was that the one where we, we gate crashed the Brazilian wedding? Or was that Hawaii? That was Hawaii. Sure. That oh, no. Carbo. Sorry, I'm getting Hawaii. That was Carbo. I'm sorry. I'm getting, both, I'm getting both of those confused as well. So Hawaii was the guacamole. No, it wasn't because that was Carbo. It's Mexican, isn't it? Hawaii was the Four Seasons when we stayed out and, and, and for the Carbo is the one and only. Oh, yeah, so, sorry. Hawaii's the one off White Lotus and Carbo was the one that I've just said everything else about. But, but anyway... The, 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 we only go to good hotels so we get them all mixed up all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we only bore when we go away, so... <laughs> when you go away. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, um, but that, the Brazilian wedding was amazing. Yeah. I don't it was know, so embarrassing. Because we, we had a room... On the beach. It was all of their friends in all of the rooms, apart from, like... We must have somehow booked early or yeah. something, you know? So we're basically ruining their wedding. But all of the rooms are on the beach and, and their wedding's on the beach. So... Um, we, but, we were sitting on the balcony, put all our lights on. So all the rooms so were in darkness apart from ours and we were like on the balcony like that, <laughs> trying to get things. involved and we were sending them champagne over, desperate to get an invite to this Just trip. like that, guy. <laughs> and in the end, they invited in the end, us. In the end, but, they were like, oh God. <laughs> gonna have to be but they didn't like us, did they? Oh, they hated they us. were so frosty. They didn't want us there at oh, all. No, I but, know. So, but we wanted to be there, so we made the most of it. So yeah, Crouchfest was just incredible. I'm so proud of you all. It was good. I've but... got slight memory loss. The whole thing. <laughs> Sli Ugh. Slightly feeling it now. As you went to the gym at seven a.m. today. That is good going. Yeah. Well done. What did you do today? Well, I've, I've just feel, I just feel really sluggish. I feel like the past three weeks has been so many parties, so much drinking, so many like events and half term and traveling, crouch fest. I just feel absolutely wiped. So I've been trying to psych myself up to go to the gym. But I d last night I went to bed and I'm going, I'm setting my alarm for quarter past six and I'm going at seven. Yeah. And I did. Well so I'm feeling very proud of myself. It just completely changes your mood, your mindset. You want to come home and eat help. Although, oh, John just made me a sausage butty. <laughs> kind of defeated. Kind of defeated. Did you? Did you have a sausage butty without me? Yeah, well, you've been, you were at in the gym. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> Thought you'd be all right with your heel. I know, yeah. With his heel. I send him the gym with his heel. A little pack lunch. <laughs> you do, yeah. <laughs> Got like a strict diet. I had, I had boiled eggs before. So you had boiled eggs before the gym and then mm. what did you have afterwards? I haven't, I don't think I've done that. Okay. Going for a big lunch in a minute. So yeah. It doesn't just happen, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but work at it. <laughs> what was your highlight of Crouchfest? Um, I thought Rudimental were absolutely amazing. Mm. I actually thought the Blind Date segment I, I was the blind date segment. sensational. Well, I got a, so I, I am so nervous at things, you know, being in, in front of crowds or anything like that. Mm. But I was probably on my my fifth Jack Daniels and Coke. However, they were only in them little tiny mini wine glasses, so it yeah. sounds a lot, but it wasn't. You're definitely a little bit like, 
Goosey Lucy. <laughs> us definitely Goosey Lucy or whatever it's called. But I, very confident. I, I would yeah, say but that. I had a pep talk from David James. <laughs> he was like, because but for just the people that don't know what the blind date segment was on Couchfest, it was basically me picking my ideal partner, and the and the, the contestants were Abby, Jet from the Gladiators, and Jermaine Defoe, who I used to play with, and it was good, wasn't it? And, yeah. who, did, and who did you pick? I picked Jermaine Defoe. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to be this because my nickname on Pete's podcast is San Marino. San Marino. Which is this football Marino. manager who kicks off every five minutes? <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I had to play. I had to play. What? That's fine. I had to play up to the role of him. Yeah. So I had to. I was being like really kind of bulky, and because I was half pissed as well, I was a bit like woo. Mm. So oh. I had to say my answer, and then when Pete didn't pick pick me, I was like fuming. Give him the bear, didn't you? Did I? Yeah, did you remember? Out of control. You you gave me it, and then the crowd. Do you not remember that? No, I'm definitely reassessing my life after the past three weeks. Oh yeah. Do you think you're getting too loud on a night out? Like you're getting, you get R- like rowdy. a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit much. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I'm, I I I absolutely, I'm so proud of you. But I think it's okay when you're like twenty. Not when you're like no, I, I find it. I find on it 40s door. No, because you're not. You're not being. You're not being knobby. Like you don't. Every, everyone's having a lot of fun, and so are you. I love it when you're like that. I did have someone in my ear at the time though, going, "Do you think we should cut Abby Mike when you were talking to the crowd?" You are joking. <laughs> Who said that? Someone professional. <laughs> What was I saying to the crowd? I think it was made to be just lower. Should we lower up your mic? Should we lower up your mic when you were talking? It wasn't like that. I think you were just going on a little bit. You went off script. I think you were talking. You did go off script. The other thing you were doing is talking into the mic to David James next to you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Obviously, that wasn't part of the... What do you mean? Sh- well, like, instead of, like, go- instead of... And then talking to him and then going back t- to the show... You were just going, uh, so what should I say here, J-Mo? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was speaking to, to David to the James of Wembley. backstage. I was speaking to David James. Oh, someone, Jermaine Defoe then. Oh, yeah, you. Defoe, yeah, Defoe. Oh, well. It you was were, great. You were sensational. And you, I thought you made it. I, I just said it's my, one of my favourite parts of the show. I'm just not, I'm not going to be me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be me anymore. <laughs> I'm not. I just want to be like... Why not? I want to be like calmer. Cool. Karma. I want to be more reserved. Do but you? I just it's just not in my DNA. Yeah, but how 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 But can you it imagine how excited I was? Mm-hmm. My husband, my brother, and my cousin putting this show on to twelve thousand people. You know, I was so excited and so proud. Like I can't just be like, this is good. <laughs> so I was like, come on! <laughs> and the, the night before, Pete didn't have, <sighs> even have his outfit. So We'd, we'd planned this whole show and then Pete was like, what the hell am I going to wear? So we were like, oh my God. So I called my stylist up, Karen, who is friends with this girl called Sophie and she makes all the boxes kind of robes. So she makes all like Anthony Joshua and all the other boxes. I can't, don't even know anymore. Um, so she made it within less than 24 hours and all Pete's colours with all his like kind of logos on from, from Crouch Fest and delivered it from Sheffield with less than 24 hours to the show. It was it, just incredible, wasn't it? It, it was unbelievable. It, it, honestly, I believe. unbelievable. She makes all like, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I know she definitely makes Anthony Joshua's. It's probably, you know, Tyson Fury, whatever, Mayweather. Yeah. She makes all the boxing um, dressing gowns, you know, like they like come the out robes. in all the silks, all the yeah, robes, yeah. right? Um, and I'm not joking, she turned this one around. I, I, we found a, you know, your stylist sort it out. And then, uh, yeah, Sophie Whitt, my name is, but uh, shout out to her because that was that was incredible how she turned that round. Oh, yeah. And, and it was amazing. Um, I'm going to keep it, I think, and put it in the office because this is so one off piece. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Sophie's like that on the phone. So what do you want, Pete? like, I just want like sequins, diamonds. <laughs> so, oh, my God. So it's your one chance, isn't it, to do something like so flamboyant, yeah. like something absolutely ridiculous. That's what Crouch Fest is all about. You asked me what it was. It's about me being an imbecile, <laughs> <laughs> doing whatever I wanted to do, and and people, you know, on board with it all. Mm. It was all about the show, and it. I wouldn't wear that normal. Everyone normal loved it. Everyone loved it. Yeah. How do you feel after it, Ross? Do you feel drained? Yeah, a little bit. 
a bit of a like you said, like a come down from the you're so high, and then you just like decompress yeah. a little bit. How, what was your highlight of the night? Um, Rue the Mountain were unbelievable, and I think because when they came on, the show was like done, so I was like. It was like, do you know what I mean? Like, Party we've time. done it. We've like, we're, well, we was the rest of it. You are like half anticipating like technical issues or the lights to go off or something like that. But when they were on, we were like, this is it. Let's go and yeah, let's it was that's it. like the time for everyone to and, enjoy. And how did Scott do? Is he still in the family? Scott's still in the family. Can, so any technical confirm. errors from his side? None that I'm aware of. I thought it went swimmingly. I thought the only fools and horses rap was another highlight as well. Oh, oh yeah, all, yeah. and all the crowd got behind it and stuff. That was funny. Got on board with that, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Tom Grennan was amazing as well. Really, really good. Yeah. It's such a tough crowd. You don't yeah. know what's going to work. Like things you think are going to work aren't. You don't know, do you? You don't know. Yeah, so anything, else, anything else happened this week? Liv made you a card, didn't she? Yeah, no, so we, we had um, fireworks night with the kids. That was great. Mm. Slightly pissed off, though, the amount of, amount of money we spent on the tickets. Then to go on a, a five-second ride was £5 a ride. Where Five pound a ride in the bloody school. Spent like two hundred quid. Bit heavy that, isn't it? That is heavy. Yeah, yeah, school fair. School yeah, fair. Yeah. Five pound a ride. It's little teacups. Teacups which went round once. Oh. Five pound a ride. I think that's a lot, don't you? Or am I just? Uh, it was. I, I it was a bit of a stitch up, yeah. Because there, there was like the hook a duck, mm. and it was like, oh, it doesn't matter if you if you don't get it, you still get a prize. And I thought, oh, that's good, because it was a fiver ago. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a tombola on? No tombola. No tombola, a school No, mind you, the fireworks were absolutely Fireworks amazing. were sensational. They were. But good. it's just nice because the kids are getting to that age now, like they're enjoying everything. No, like previously, they've been like babies in the pram and they're all just loving it and mesmerized. So that was nice, mm. wasn't it? It was nice. And obviously, we went for a dog walk on, on the Sunday. Um, and something happened to us on this dog walk that I. Oh, we found two dogs. Well, we thought we found two dogs, but then the owner came round the corner, and I'm banking on her not listening to this, if I'm honest, because... <laughs> I don't think she will. I know, that she didn't look like the type of person that would listen to this. No. But, anyway, she did come round late, and she, she was lovely, and the dogs played really well, didn't they? Yep. And, uh... So we saw these two labs, and for about 10 minutes, they were on their own, and I was like, oh my God, so I was like... But one of them was like a proper chunk. So I was like, is this, uh, is this like chunk. half Rottweiler? It looked like a Rottweiler. It looked yeah. like a Rottweiler. Big tank of a Labrador. Mm. So we were scared at first. Um, but then I got him and I put him on our lead. And I was trying to get his little tag to call his mum. Yeah. So we had them for about 10 minutes. And then she came around the corner. And she was like, oh, no, they're not. They're not lost. And they were brothers from the same litter. One black one, one brown one. Two completely different dogs with both hefty. And then she was like, oh, how old your lab? And I said, oh, he's four. There's eight. And I said, oh, God, yours has got a lovely silky coat. I said, Jeffrey's hair is like so kind of... Of course. No, he's oh, like yeah. a kind of wiry, Jeffrey, yeah, isn't he? A bit wiry, yeah. And he had, he had kind of silky fur. So we said, you know, well, what do you feed him? And she told us, mm -hmm. we said, oh, you know, we're looking into that. She said, what do you feed yours? And we told them what we feed them. She went, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> as if, oh, that's, no, oh, you shouldn't, shouldn't really be feeding him. And, but bearing in mind, that her dog was fat as fuck. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and obviously, that's why I don't want us to, be, to, to yeah, listen. Yeah. He was a proper it was, chunk. A, it was on the larger side, should I maybe say. <laughs> he was a chunk, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Like, how dare. She you know, Jeff. Uh, like, say our dog yeah, food was I, I right. went on a, a, the dog food recommendation from our vet. Mm. So you can't get better than but that. But he's not, he's not a porky dog, ours. No, he's slow. No. He's a crouch. Yeah, <laughs> long, long and wiry. <laughs> he should be. He should be a pork of the amount of food he eats, but he does. He's not. Yep, yep. We all defy logic, really, don't we? <laughs> we do, yeah. Well, I don't. You do. Size of my arms in crowd chest. What? That full Something frontal t-shirt. I look like I had bigger muscles than Jet. <laughs> really? Mm. You mm. look sensational. Oh, will you stop? So is that your wine of the week, dog snubs? My, no, my, my wine of the snubs. week is, is me paying a compliment to Abby okay. and her saying, will you <laughs> shut up? <laughs> Had enough of this. That's my wine. You can't keep saying that to me. What do you want me to actually say? I can't, I'm paying you a compliment. You just say, oh, so kind, Pete. That's what I'd like you to say. Yeah, but why do you keep saying it? Well, surely that's a good thing that you pay your wife a compliment. You need to stop giving me compliments. Why? 
you heard anything? <laughs> Chloe's with us today, right? You know, I'm into, Chloe, the, you know I'm into the um treat me and keep and keep Vin Diesel kind of guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm joking, uh, I'm definitely not. Yeah. No, Chloe's with us today, right? What do you think? If your boyfriend or husband said a compliments you know, over and over, would you be would you just fuck off? Probably, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I probably agree, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just because I feel... You shouldn't have got you in. I feel run down. Yeah, we've got a new member of our team. Now we're going global. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, now we've hit the big time. <laughs> um, sells out Wembley. Now we think we're big time. <laughs> yeah, so we've, so we've employed one more person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were totally understaffed anyway. What's your dream goal? <laughs> World domination. <laughs> <laughs> We've hit the big time here. No, We've got I three just, people working for us. No, I just think because I think because I'm so tired, exhausted, run down, mm. all from great things. Yeah, but I just feel like I need to take care of myself a little bit better. Well, that's all why. No, I'm just saying oh, that's right. why I don't take compliments well because when you don't feel you don't you don't take them well, babe, at all. Like you actually have a go at me for for giving them. You um, love getting compliments. <laughs> well, who doesn't? Like, <laughs> yeah. you pay me a compliment, it makes me feel good. I'd, and I'll say, oh, thanks, babe. It's really. so funny when I like... <laughs> <laughs> okay. If I like give Pete a compliment, because in our room, like, if I'm lying in bed, I can see into the dressing room and I can see him in the mirror. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what and she's about to say. I can see him, it. like, smiling to himself in the mirror like that. <laughs> You love it. And you, you never don't know. Done that. You I've, never, have. I've never done that. You'll go like that with your hair or you'll look oh. at yourself and I'll just be pissing myself in bed laughing at you. <laughs> but you always do it every time I give you a compliment. It's like gives you a little spring in your step. Well, it does. I mean, that's what it does, isn't it? That's what, obviously. <laughs> I've what, got my wine. I love, actually. No, but like, hold on, just to clarify now. When you pay me a compliment, it's not so you can laugh at me, is it? After. <laughs> Are they actual real compliments? No. Oh, yeah. I don't want them otherwise. I don't mm. want them. No, they're always keep real. Them. They're always keep real. Compliments. They're always real. But... You're doing it to entertain yourself. No, because it's not Piss all off. the time when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, smiling I, I at yourself. I never ever look at myself in the mirror. You do. Very rarely. Don't. I didn't even take my makeup off after Grouch Fest. I woke up. Kaz and Tommy Ray, Jason and Stacey, I got up, made everyone like brekkie. Hadn't even looked in the mirror. And then when I looked in the mirror, I was like bloody slash. <laughs> like a big black. <laughs> <laughs> smear all over my face. I was like, oh! Anyway, my wine. Pete's been ill since Crouch Fest, the cold. Yeah. And it's like, you know, there's been zero snogs or affection and he's like dying and like, oh, feel sorry for himself. But when a woman is sick, you're expected to perform like a porn star still. <laughs> And then when you're Standard sick, practice. it's like Pete's got two <clears throat> two pieces of tissue up either nostril, my fleece dressing gown on, pyjamas, socks, and it's like shivering in bed. And I'm like, so Pete, don't you want to have sex with me? But when it's the other way around. Yeah, like it hit, hits men different, don't it? I yeah. mean, like, just hits men different. It's like, it's, you try and be match up all year and just <laughs> one, one day it'll just strike you down, just can't do anything. I was glad, by the way, it's fine. I know you were glad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hope I have a cold 364 days a year. No, I don't. Will you stop making me out to be some kind of fridge? fridge. Anyway, so earlier on in the week, I put on my Instagram this amazing letter that my daughter um, about written about me. And she was like, Mum, I love you so much. You're my idol. I, I can't ah. love you anymore. You're the dream mum. You make me so happy. And I loved it. And then she made me another card. And it was a picture of me and her on the front, on the back. I love you. And it was like, to your mom, I love you 80% of the time. I was like, how could you go from loving me so much to loving me 80% of the time? What <laughs> was the reason? 80% <laughs> What was the reason why she let me? 20% of the time you shower. Which is code for, please do your homework. Uh, uh, brush, brush your, your teeth. teeth go to get bed. to bed. <laughs> yeah. That's not shower. in the long run is actually... Good for her. She'll be exhausted with rotten teeth and <laughs> that's what, dumb. That's what I'm saying. But she takes it as a as a negative. Mm. Did you ask her how much of the time she loves fun dad, Pete? <laughs> no, I'm the favourite. Do you reckon? Yeah, 100%. She has to make you cards to keep you happy. 
<laughs> I know how she we feels. We have a mutual understanding. It <laughs> doesn't need to be said. Just to write you a card and go, go on, I really, I honestly do. That's one thing I don't question, how much my kids No, love they me. love you, obviously, you know. And like, prefer like, me. so much. I mean, it, it's just, just me slightly prefer more. Me. They don't? 100%. How can you say that? Every single child prefers me. Pete, you don't even play football with the boys? <laughs> what is <laughs> talking about? You I don't? Do. I do. You don't. I saw some cones in your back garden. Yeah, they've, they've, they've never been used. Pissing down with it's rain. It's embarrassing when I have to take my kids to football with Crouch on the back and they're useless. <laughs> and everyone's like, are these Peter Crouch's kids? And I'm like, Johnny, they don't even know <laughs> what a goal is. Clancy or on the back of tops. They're yeah. four of... No, I'd, 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 they I'd, don't know which way I'd, to I'd run. I said you can't do that anymore. The pitch goes so you that... can't have Crouch on the back and perform like that. <laughs> I, the last time I took them, I was off. I took them and I just hit it in car park. <laughs> There's like three no, pitches from goal that and that and that and that and no. and Jack runs horizontally across all three. We're not. We're right. Like, you're not here. teaching they're them how four, to do it. They're four and five, right? They need to. Lo they need to love it before. Yeah. You kind yeah, but that's how you, it, it doesn't have to be playing football. It can be football. You leave the football to me, darling. All right. You just thought Sam Mourinho was a manager. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, it's, not, it's a it's a country. Chelsea manager. San Mourinho. Jose Mourinho, that is. Jose Mourinho. Is that not who you're calling me? No. Oh, God. I thought you called me Jose Mourinho. <laughs> oh, well, so what? <laughs> They're no goal way, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, audience wines. Now uh, you've just tried to humiliate me. Uh, you did it all yourself. Audience wines. But you look gorgeous doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you look great in a summary, no kid. <laughs> All right, audience wines. I hate it when, when my husband puts his rolled up socks in the wash, expecting me to unravel them before washing after they've been on his sweaty feet. Ooh. I've asked him time and time again to unravel them. Now his crinkly socks stay in the wash like that and he deals with them once dry. I hate it. <laughs> I don't mind unraveling your socks. <laughs> do you have a little whiff of them before you put them in? No, I do not. <laughs> Pete doesn't have any smelliness to him, bizarrely. Mm. I know he looks like he should. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ab, Ab takes my socks off before she bites them. <laughs> before she bites. Before you bite my toes. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so oh, yeah. you take them off and then you, you fold them up <laughs> mm. before you chew on them. Stop. I'd rather die than do that. I wouldn't even do that for a million pounds. You would. I wouldn't. How does that one? No. Um, but yeah, you, you you don't mind. I don't think... Do I, do I do that? No, you take like one off and the other one and just leave them both randomly on the floor. But your socks aren't smelly. They're not. I don't know. I've never really had smelly feet ever. No. Remember how John had this girlfriend once who had the smelliest <laughs> feet? I remember that as well. <laughs> I used to go in with like full Febreze. Her feet are being, she was super tall as well. So her feet would hang out the bed. And I'd go in with like Dettol, <laughs> spray her feet of a morning. I, I couldn't bear it. I just, there's no need for it. Smelly feet. Wow. I don't even wear socks and don't have smelly feet. Oh. It's not something that I've suffered with at all. No. 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 But I don't, I don't scrub my feet in the shower, do you? No, definitely not. Do you? But I get a bath. I don't even do my legs. Have you? You don't wash your legs. No, I just let the soap dribble down onto them. Yeah, I don't, I, don't <laughs> like, I, don't, I really wash my legs. You don't wash I'll be there, your legs. I've been there all fucking day. <laughs> but what about when you have mud on you and stuff? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. If you've got mud on you. Oh, yeah, if I'm playing, if I'm at a match, I'm, yeah, I'm like, I scrub my legs. Yeah, yeah. But like, not, not just on a random shower. A uh, random shower? You mean a daily shower? Like yeah. a daily one, yeah. Like a daily kind of it's shower. Armpits. Like a, yeah, do down bits. Like a little bit. Bum bits, sorted. What about your hair? Oh yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I I I wash my legs. I yeah. shave my legs. Yeah, you're shaving them, aren't you? Mm. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's something that I. It's not the the key area for me. Put it that way. I don't think you wash <sighs> anything. Sweaty legs, do you? Don't think Pete, Pete washes anything <laughs> after the, the, the towels. Lyle. <laughs> 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 right, let's move on. Next line before I dump you. <laughs> Can I read this? Do you want to read one, please? <clears throat> Let's have a look at your reading text. My today. weekly wine this week is about my boyfriend, Jake. He's amazing, supportive, and I couldn't ask for a better partner. However, however why... I thought there'd be a however. <laughs> however, why is it when we are driving anywhere, he says, put some music on, babe. We cannot listen to one fucking song all the way through without changing it. 
Sophia does that. You do it. I don't. Yeah, you, you do that. It drives me insane. I'll be halfway through a Belton song, singing my heart out, and he cuts it off mid midway for him to turn around and say, I got bored of that, what the hell? He listens to the pod as well, so please call him out on this irritating behaviour that annoys the hell out of me. Thank you, Abby from Kent. Ooh. Do you know what? I used to do that when I was young. Mm. When my mum was driving, like, flick the radio, like, to every... Just keep going. But I think I, when that you is... listen to Capital Extra Reloaded, you don't need to skip. <laughs> 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 Every song's a belter. Uh, it is, it is, you can't deny it. It is good. Or smooth. It's smooth's the best, isn't it? Depends what kind of like... You like magic, don't you? I like magic on Magic's a like... Good. I think it's a Sunday evening. You like a bit Mark Wright, don't you? Don't mind Mark, Mark, Mark Wright Club we were Classics. Going, we were going <laughs> out to... Um... Saturday around, what is it? Like seven till ten or something like that? We were going out the other night and he went, classics, to, the, he went to the driver. Um, <laughs> can you put Magic on? Uh, Mark's on now for Club Classics. I was like, what the hell's it's hot, Mark? It's hot, it's hot. He was like, um, he went to the driver. Can you put Hart on? Mark's on now for the old Club Classics. I was like, who the hell is Mark? Uh, and uh, how do you even know this? <laughs> that looked at me and was like, the fuck is... <laughs> Well, right, Club Classics. Oh, God, but it is a sign of getting older thing. It's like when we, we went to this club after Crouch Fest and we're like, oh, God, it's a bit loud in here, isn't it? <laughs> a bit loud, a bit noisy, can't move. <laughs> Couldn't even Can't even talk. Anyone, yeah. it's a, that's a getting old thing. Is it? It's too, what, clubs are too loud? Mm. I don't know, it's just not, it's not really for me now. I, I like it if it's good music and you can still converse. Do you know where I want to go to? Like a club that plays like, ain't no stopping mm. us now. Agreed. We're on mm. the group. No, like True. that kind of... Songs that you can sing along to. Yeah, yeah where you like can that sing and dance almost thing. like a wedding party yeah. playlist. That's where I want to go. I don't want to listen to... <laughs> was a bit banging, wasn't it? Yeah. People, the, the youngsters were loving it though, weren't they? Yeah. People the, right at the, the front, like in front of the DJ going, ah, oh. no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi <laughs> Absolutely not for me Yeah that is an annoying habit Turn it over Back Yeah it is very annoying My uh, daughter does it Yeah Incredible drinking great. Oh what's this Incredible drinking game What way to start what? Incredible drinking game In order to spice up the podcast Not that it needs it I decided to take a shot Every time Abby uses the word incredible oh, no. <laughs> To describe an experience Or someone else So far I've only been doing this For a month or so So um, I've had to Miss need the a compilation second half of, this. of every podcast <laughs> uh, Because I've been too pissed To remember lo Loving the podcast Keep up the good work So she's that pissed In the first half That she can't remember The second half of the pod <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> that is incredible. I don't know what this is. You've just started it, haven't you? Just started what? Like, you know, you know, you've not always said incredible all the time. I do. But just because we're sitting down and talking to each other, you notice it more. But I think it's a positive word. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's better than saying something negative all the time, isn't it? Like, it's better than going, shite. <laughs> shite. <laughs> Went to this holiday. Shite. Went to Crouch Fest. Shite. <laughs> yeah, you're, you you lead an incredible life. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. You look incredible. Thanks. <laughs> incredible. It's incredible. So why don't you just, do you know what I mean? Carry on, babe. Positivity. That's what this therapy crouch is Caroline's all about. Caroline's got the best um, vocab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should... What's the word? Vocab. Vocabulary. Yeah. Lexicon. Yeah. So after Crouch Fest, there was so, I was so surprised to see how many females there were in the audience. And everyone kept grabbing me going, are you and Pete going to do a live show? I don't know if I could do that. Would you be nervous? I'd be so nervous. But it's such a buzz. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a buzz once you've done it, like especially Crouch Fest. Would you do it on the similar wavelength to Crouch Fest or would you just do a bit more of like a live podcast, do you think? Or would you make it a spectacle? Well, I can make a spectacle of myself. <laughs> I'm always a bloody spectacle. Uh, all night. I'm, I'm changing. I am changing. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to drink now for a week. <laughs> Four days. <laughs> no, I'm going to... So many of our friends have stopped drinking. Have they? Completely? Mm -hmm. Completely. I think it's a thing you do once you hit a certain yeah, a couple age. couple of my mates did it. They read a book. It was, you know, it's Alan Carr thing that you're talking about. Oh, yeah. They read his book. It was him. 
his bar. Oh, the stop smoking guy? Yeah. 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 He did the stop drinking one. Did really? he? I think, I think it, I'm sure it was him. They read it and stopped drinking. And bearing in mind, these had like been my mates since I was, and they, they would, they would drink a lot. Yeah. Um, when I say a lot, they weren't like, not alcoholics. I mean, they just drink quite a bit. Mm -hmm. so, like um, the social drink. Yeah. But like at home as well, sometimes after work and things like that. Like we do the odd one, like drinking at home. Yeah. Like that. And then they've just cut all that out. And but I think when you feel so much better for it. When yeah. you were a footballer, we were so disciplined. Like both of us, we'd have like one night out a week. We'd drink one day a week and that was it. But kind of when you retired and then we were in lockdown, there was kind of, especially in lockdown, you could drink because you kind of had nothing. You're not getting up for work in the morning. Not getting up for like... work. You didn't have to feel sharp because you were, I don't know. Like... There's a balance, isn't there, I think. But I, um, I think that's a slippery slope, that drinking at home. But again, when you've got four kids and you can't get a babysitter and you can't go out, it's, sometimes it's easier to put the kids to bed and then it's like, oh, need a glass of wine at the end of the... Yeah, the day. Th there's no right... I, I've never, I've never felt like in out of control. Oh, never, never. With it, ever. No. And if I don't like go, oh, I need a drink. We just, you know, do... I've done it because we want to. Yeah, no, it'd just be nice to kind of test yourself every now and then, wouldn't it? Yeah. Like I say, I was so kind of dedicated my, throughout my football career. Like I had the odd blowout, but I would never, <clears throat> like once a week or, you know, once every couple of weeks even. Mm. Um, but obviously now I haven't got that kind of pressure to yeah to be as fit as I as I can. Now you've just got this podcast to turn up to. Yeah, yeah. you know. Who gives a can, fuck? We've got, we got, <laughs> we got a segment called The Weekly Wire. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and like, the same with the, with the Peter Crouch point. It's like we sit in a pub. Yeah. So there's... It's kind of excuses. Yeah, but there's a drink. balance, isn't there? You know, there's there's one side of you. You know, it's it's great being you know fit and healthy and motivated and all of, all of these things. But you've also got to live your life. Mm. You've got to have fun. Like it is fun going out and having a few drinks and having a chat with your friends and having a dance and a laugh and yeah. You know, and and, and I think obviously all of that is possible. With are we going too deep here? No, because it's a part of our cult. It's a part of our culture in England. Yeah, I think, especially I, there's a pub on every corner. Yeah, right. And that, if you look in London, some of the pubs are like from the 1600s. Hundreds of years old. <laughs> you no, know, and they've been there for hundreds of years, and and it's always been a part of our culture. And I love that part of our culture is going to the pub mm. with our mates and socialising over a couple of drinks and. I don't think I don't want that to change, and I'm not saying it will change. It won't change for us. We we enjoy that, mm. but the odd time to just go like right, let's do a couple of weeks without, or just mm. just, just to prove you can. I think you're gonna have to get me pregnant again. <laughs> we can try after this. <laughs> I never want. How we go? <laughs> one sip of alcohol throughout my pregnancies, obviously. Yeah, you were so good during. I was pregnancy. so ill. Anyway, just being pregnant with like the morning sickness, which lasted 24 hours a day for nine months. I didn't feel any better for it. But, you know, friends of mine who have, you know, when they're pregnant, feel fantastic or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't notice a difference in that no. respect. But I, I think balance, everything in moderation is good. How do we get onto this? I don't I know. No idea. <laughs> so do you think if we were to have a therapy crouch fest if you like it'd get as rowdy as pizza or would you try and keep it a little bit different I think a therapy crouch fest <laughs> it's got a nice ring to it it does it does <laughs> I think we need some um, it, there'd be so many more girls in the audience we'd need like a little magic mic segment <laughs> oh, I can do that you know what I mean like, <laughs> that wouldn't be a problem uh, I think it'd be like a them hen do yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what's the tune what's the, what is the uh the full Monty song. Wait, just wait a minute. Hot oh, chocolate, is it? Yeah. You sexy thing. You yeah. sexy thing. You. Just think, like, if, if they needed, like, a Magic Mike segment, I could just... <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, ladies. I've got you covered. <laughs> I've seen you dance this so many times. Oh, oh my God, what? In the Have buff? you seen you dance this? Wait until I get the shirt off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this will knock them dead. So, ladies, if you want some of that, <laughs> it still sounds a therapy crouch fest. Therapy crouch fest. But would you be up if I said, Ross, come on, I need you, to, I need you and our John and us to plan a therapy crouch fest? I think you tell me to piss oh, off after the God. seven months you have had. Yeah, give us at least a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been able to talk to anyone. Like when I called John and Ross, like bearing in mind, before we were all working together, I'd speak to these every day. Mm hmm. And they're like, can't talk, I'm too busy. Oh, I don't think I want that in my life we're, again. We had them harassed. 
harassed. <laughs> they were harassed, yeah. Harassed. Yeah, and uh, you know, like, so I was worried about it. Like, there was, we were calling in favours. There's a lot going on for everyone. None more so than the boys, obviously, producing it. What did you think about my contribution to the show, The Greatest Showman? Oh, that was that was a, spec- a spectacle. That's the word that we'd use for that. It was sensational, wasn't it? It was. It was. Have it you heard amazing. back? Did you have you heard any feedback from them? Did they enjoy themselves? Yeah, they loved it. I actually heard from Josh, so a friend friend of mine, Josh. So sorry. So I wanted because it was so funny. Pete was talking about obviously Mike De- Mike Dean being you know the greatest showman. Mm-hmm. But then Sky started doing The Greatest Showman for all the players, didn't Ooh. they? And we'd already thought of this idea and I was like, oh no. Um, it's going to look like we ripped them off. It's going to look like we ripped them off, but we didn't. So I used to go to the Harlequin Roadshow when I was a little girl, <laughs> um, d- dance school, and owned by Pat and Craig and their son, Josh, is an incredible dancer now and he's got like dance school and does all music videos and loads of amazing dancey things. So I said, Josh, I need your help. I want to do the greatest showman for Crouch Fest. So he gave us 30 dancers. They were all phenomenal, weren't they? Oh, it, was, it was amazing. That was a real pinch me moment for me. Yeah, they were, they were such good dancers. And uh, yeah, like, you know, Phil and like the, the professionals and even the, you know, the ones who were still students that came on. Yeah, because half of them were only year one students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute spectacle. And, you know, their first gig was playing in front of 12,000 people at Wembley. Like, it was amazing, but they were like, thanks so much. We got looked after so well, looked after so well, and they absolutely loved it. It takes so. some bottles to do that, doesn't it? I think dancing alone in like a club yeah, is difficult, yeah. but 12,000 people, all mm. eyes on you. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's and you know, so the day before, so Josh obviously choreographed the whole thing, and then we only had a rehearsal the day before, and we got all the dancers together, and I, I went down to rehearsal to watch it, and I was like, he was just going, bap, bap. But, and then the dancers like ba ba ba, and yeah. I was like, "How could you remember that? They just got it like that. It's mm. Incredible! <laughs> <laughs> it was, was incredible. And our Elliot, as I call L, L, I need you to get me thirty six Greatest Showman outfits. And she was like, "What?" So shout out to my sister L. Yeah, she did very well. Who styled them all and all hands on deck. L did well. L did well. <laughs> El Diddwell. Fucking hell. No, that's always Steve Steve Diddwell. Steve Steve Diddwell. Diddwell. Fucking hell. He did. He did do well. Steve Diddwell. Yeah. Who come up with that? I don't know. Wish it was me. Someone said it the Uh, other night. Yeah, I can't even remember. Oh, it was so funny because I was like, um, because obviously it was Steve Sidwell's first Crouch Fest. Yeah. And he was unreal. Like, so confident. Great. And I went, what did you think of Steve? And he went, Steve did well. <laughs> Brilliant. You have to say that on your pod. Yeah. You can have that. You can have that zinger. Have that zinger from the therapy. Well, should we go into the agony abs? Yeah, because this is a bit random, but I'm still on a high. Mm-hmm. I know we should be talking more things about our own podcast, but I'm so proud of you. And Well, I know. I appreciate that. It was something big that kind of I did um, that's kind of spilled over into this podcast. Um, oh. But that's because you're... I think very proud of of all of us. Pete wouldn't let me go. Sorry, I just can need you to... just maybe move that mic? Down yeah, I just need to one. my knees. I'm getting old. Can what are you gonna that? do? I think you're gonna fart. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, I just need to. Oh. I just. <laughs> when have I ever farted? Well, I thought you were gonna absolutely drop a bomb or no, something. Pete, don't, don't even. Should look more confident now. Chloe's in the room. You can't <laughs> even pretend just... to say that. Well, because what did you do? You were just going. Oh, sorry, I just need my... to. Oh. I was bending my hips the other way. The sore. My hips are sore from all that. Twerking and crouch chest. <laughs> hips, <laughs> hip, hips didn't lie the other night, baby. Uh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> it didn't lie. All that twerking you're doing. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Saw the video. You what showed video? me the video of you doing that, that, that twerk. <laughs> that, that twerk. Wasn't for me, that one. I don't know who that was for. <laughs> I wasn't there. It was for Alfie. Uh, all right, Agony Ab. Uh, this is from the girl who wrote into the podcast uh, a few weeks ago asking for advice on how to approach the guy in the gym. Oh, Remember God. That? Well, we gave her the chat up lines. How are you doing? Here we go. <laughs> hey, please keep me anon. I need help. I'm dating a guy who's pretty perfect except for one thing. He is, for want of a nicer way of putting it, whack in the sack. So is this the girl from no. the gym? So I, I, so I, I spoke to her and it, it's not the gym guy who's whacking the sack. It didn't work out with him. But it's the gym girl. So she's wrote in again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened to Jim Guy? He must have even been whacking in the sucker. I don't know. Or oh, at least, yeah, maybe that's just not worked out. Mm. Oh, well, 
She's okay. with a fella. He's whacking a sack, apparently. There are no motions in the oceans, <laughs> and I don't know what to do. I'm happy to give some delicate pointers, but the foundations of this Playboy mansion are terrible, and the whole building is condemned. Is there any hope for me? I reckon they just she should just put the incredible gulp on. They should watch it together and get a bit, get a bit of an in, bit of inspo. <laughs> I can lend it to them if they. <laughs> it's vile. I don't know. That must be. It's, I've never found myself in this position. You never have, babe, have you? Mm -mm. Thank God. So it must be tough for them. Eh? Must be so <laughs> difficult. I don't know how one would deal with her. Oh, no, we really either. Mm. Do you think that's like a a real thing? Do you think you can learn sex? Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I, think... I hate saying this word on on camera. Well, I think you have to you have to learn it, don't you? You know, it comes with experience. <laughs> yeah, but you can't go to like sex school, can you? Like I actually you... don't think that. I know you're joking, but I don't think the incredible gulp shout. Obviously, not the incredible gulp, but something yeah. to that is that part of shout. What, just watch something. She could put something on that she likes particularly. Like, it doesn't have to be like... Like what? It doesn't have like, to be like what? mad stuff, but like, I don't know. Whatever mad she's into, she could put it like that yeah. type of stuff on and go, oh, what that, she, what that looks she fun. wants from a man. You put, is that what people do when they watch that? Is that what? Is that the thought? Is that the thought process? I reckon so. <laughs> I don't. Um... It's a difficult, it's hard. I mean, like, it depends how much she likes him. I think, I think you if, could if the guide relationship, someone. Yeah, before that, I think, you know, obviously there's, if there's every other part of the relationship's great, then you've got to work on it. See, I think a, a bad kisser would be worse than bad in bed. There's nothing worse than a bad kisser. But like the worst thing is, is like when he wants to do it, then like that, it's going to be so awkward, isn't it? Like, Bitch. I'm just thinking like if he's having a nightmare in that scenario and he, he, he comes in and he's like, there we go. <laughs> I mean, as if yeah, but he's what like man the man does that before going into know. the I'm bedroom. Just I'm just imagining her getting the ick from him anyway. He might think in his head he's a top jagger, top goose off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I think I think any any time someone like asks you for like sex is an ick anyway. I think it just has to happen, mm. and then she can anyone who anyone who says it, it just reminds me of bridesmaids. Where that man's like holding a boob and goes, oh, yeah. do you like that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. It just knocks me sick. I think she has to just guide him in the right <laughs> to the direction. Left, to the left. <laughs> slightly, slightly deeper. To the left, left, to the left. Yeah, yeah. Everything <laughs> in the box, to the left. <laughs> in the box. <laughs> fucking hell, Pete. Pete, you filthy pervert. That's the fucking song. <laughs> let's move. Let's, it's getting awkward now. Let's, no. She just needs to guide him. Mm -hmm. This can easily be rectified. If he if he's great in every other area, she can just create the motion in the ocean. <laughs> I'll be giggling away, Chloe. <laughs> Wasn't you, Romeo, was it? <laughs> Oh. All right. Hey, Pete and Ab, thank you for providing me with hours and hours of hilarious podcasts. I enjoy them so much. They get me through the day at work. Abby, you are very witty and funny, and Pete is just a legend. I have a dilemma. My partner and I live in a rented house with our two-year-old son, uh, which we'd like to get out of, but uh, we also uh, would like to have another baby. I'm 31 and she's 34. I don't want to get stuck for ages in the rented house if we have the second child. My partner and I would also like to get married, but I don't see this as the biggest priority at the moment. Mm. Could you could do with some advice on this? Ooh, well, I've got a lot of friends going through this at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like even even like my sister. You know, it's like the house, marriage, house, second baby, marriage, baby. What what? What comes first? Where do you go? The egg? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's easy for me to say because we are married. We've got kids, and yeah, but we've I'm got just... our house, but. As an old fart, I would look back and go, I think the wedding is the least priority. Okay. If I was in that position, my focus now as an old person, probably not when I was younger, would be to get the house and get on the property ladder. But what if they can't just do that? I mean, like what, it is hard to get a property these I know. days. No, it so, is. It's, imp so, it's impossible. You know, do you I not have kids? Do you know what I mean? Like, especially she's 34, it's like mm. geriatric, like, yeah, territory. Isn't Excuse it? me, aren't you technically a geriatric mother from 30, 35? Watch yourself, <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, is I think, isn't yeah. it? I don't think but it's like, from 34, I think, I think that's I think far it's from 38. Young. Oh, is it okay? Your class is a geriatric. Are you a geriatric then? No, because I'm not pregnant. 
<laughs> but I mean, like you're called a geriatric mother. <laughs> Honestly, you are. Oh, yeah. There's more risks involved as you get older mm. when you get pregnant. But saying that, you know, women are choosing to have or choosing is the right word, but having babies later because of those things. You need to sort out the career, the home, save up. You know, it's like we're in a very fortunate position, but for no, it's, it's tough. That's what I'm saying. It's like it's hard to. Um, you know, I have two kids in, in, in the world anyway, and let, let alone you know buy a house and and, and get married, all of those things, and, and and that's what people want, isn't it? If I was him, I'd probably, if the baby comes along, that's great. I wouldn't be too worried about having another baby in a rented accommodation. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world, but no. you know, ideally, you like in in foreign countries, people don't even own the houses; they mm -hmm. they oh. rent. Yeah, all the time. Like, I, I, there's so many people. Rent in like, like Spain, and, like, Madrid. Yeah, just all my older forever. friends, none of them own the house. Will you stop yeah. doing that banging thing. Do that every two seconds. Why? Because it's just. See, so even Chloe's gonna I'll bang you if you carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing that a lot? I hadn't noticed, but thanks for pointing Pete, it out because now we've got to do. stop noticing. I had noticed. And in bed of a night, you do that. <laughs> you go like you go like this, play with your nose, and then you go. <laughs> On the bed. I didn't realise I was so annoying. Say that. And then you go. Do you see what, what I see all day? <laughs> this. That's all I see. All day. Go. <laughs> go. Yeah, but I think you forget go, 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 that go, go, I, I have to do. Go. And I go, what are you doing, babe? And you go, oh, just working. <laughs> go. <laughs> Can I tell you what I'm doing when I'm doing that? I'm doing four school WhatsApp groups. Violets. Four school uh, Every portals. time I look over, it's like. Freaking Instagram, Instagram or like <laughs> clothes. No, it's not. It is, babe. It's not. It's actually oh. home inspo. I don't even look at clothes anymore. If so if that's my worst thing, I'd rather do that than be a moron on the phone all night. <laughs> 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 yeah, so, yeah, it's a tough one. But I, I think don't put... I don't know why I keep saying this wedding thing. What's the order of priority? If you got to sum it up, what would you say to them? Here's your, th here's your three. Order of priority for me would be Secure in the nest. Mm -hmm. Then you love the nest, don't you? Mm. <laughs> Bring in life into the to the world, into and then when? Yeah, yeah. But like you say, I don't think you know if you do have another baby, they'll, it'd be fine and it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know, you, you you try for the for the house. Yeah, house and baby is quite a similar. Yeah, thing. and marriage would definitely be. On the back burner when you've got enough time and money to be able to and do it. And it's also like having done a wedding without kids and mm. with. I loved having the kids there. I think it's so special for them. Yeah, it was nice. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a piece of paper. There's so much more to love than, you know, that. All right, there's, a, there's one here. I'll read it because it's quite long. I know you struggle. <laughs> uh, hello, I've got a bit of a dilemma that I'd appreciate your advice on, please. Please keep me anon. My sister-in-law is turning 40 next year and she wants all the family. Her parents, siblings, partners and kids go to Paris to celebrate. <laughs> I personally think it's, it's a really big ask. It will cost us about a grand for a couple of nights accommodation. They'd like us to go for five. Oof. Euro star, food, drink, etc. Plus we'll have to use um, some annual leave from work. I'd much rather we got her a voucher for a really nice restaurant or similar. It would cost us a fraction of the cost of, of a holiday. My partner isn't the one to rock the boat with his family, so we'll just keep quiet and go along with the rest of the gang. It seems that everyone else is happy with the trip to Paris, and I suspect I'm the only one that thinks that this is quite excessive, self-centred and quite arrogant to expect people to go away for God, your birthday. God, she sounds like a right book. <laughs> I'd never do this, but my in-law's family have form and love holidaying together. When my brother-in-law turned 30 a few years ago, we were all expected to go to Portugal for a week. Back then, we only went for three nights and everyone else stayed for seven. We've got two young kids, so holidays aren't really as relaxing as they were pre -kids. She hates her in-laws. And it is really expensive to go away for a couple of nights. Help. I don't know what to do. Do I say something to the sister-in-law or mother-in-law? Do I just put my foot down and say no? Go with it, because sometimes you just have to. Thank you, Anon. Well, Anon, my 40th is coming up in, well, 
t- it's not this year, it's next year. So, and I, I want everyone to come on holiday for my birthday. <laughs> okay, so you disagree with her? I disagree with her. There's a deep, there's a deeper rooted issue here. She just doesn't like her in uh, fella's family. You think? Maybe, yeah. Maybe that's the case. And if that is the case... Um... To be honest, I was shocked how expensive <laughs> Paris was because mm. when I went on the Hindu, I could not believe it. How expensive it is? Oh my God. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, so we do get that. But I am not I'm not gonna say no to a holiday. I also think that when she's like, I'd rather just get her a voucher, that's like a fucking sh- that's a like, shit present for like a twenty third birthday, isn't it? A mm. voucher at the mind of fortieth. Yeah. That's like no, a fortieth I mean I, I it was the thirtieth they went to Portugal for, wasn't it? Mm. I didn't and the fortieth, right, is the is the Paris trip. I, I, I think, you know, life's about great experiences. When you turn 40, it's like you want all your mates together, do a big extravaganza. I realise things, it, you know, it might be a bit pricey, but you can mention that. Well, she could get a babysitter for the kids. She could leave the kids with her parents if she's got some more uh, family. Yeah. You Especially know, she, if they only go for three nights. I know, she's just looking for excuses. She just hates her uh, in-laws. Bit of a random one. It's kind of you congratulate me for a festival that I shouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I'm so proud. And I actually feel a bit like, oh my God, I've got nothing to look forward to. Like we've been wet, apart from our secret trip. We'll get on to that in the next pod, my darling. <laughs> um, we have been talking about this fucking secret trip for about two months on this pod. Well, yeah, we've had to plan it a long way in advance. That's why. Long. <laughs> <laughs> long. <laughs> Storm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel so proud, and I actually feel like a bit of an anti-climax now. Do you know what I mean? Because I just feel like, oh, it's all it's done. done yeah. It's like, oh, what are we going to do with our lives? Let's what just make cra- a shit out of therapy crouches. <laughs> <laughs> what podcast do you prefer? This one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I love this one. Uh, And I love you so much. And we'll see you next week, listeners. Bye.